Hi, I'm going to teach you how to love physics, and that happens when you learn how to understand physics. In this video, I will show you how to apply Newton's laws of motion to physical situations. In other words, I will be going over how to do physics problems that involve Newton's laws. I approach this by a series of enumerated steps. This approach worked well for a student that I tutored last semester, so I want to present it to you. I know that not everyone learns in the same way, but if this is a way that will help you to learn, and if you're able to master this method, you'll be capable of approaching any problem that requires Newton's laws from the recognition of that fact all the way to solving for all the relevant variables. Here's the four steps. One, determine which physical laws apply to the physical situation. Two, draw complete and accurate free body diagrams. Three, write the vector equations that correspond to the applicable physical laws. Four, solve the equations for the unknowns of interest. I will demonstrate how to work through these steps by using them to solve a problem as an example. Suppose you try to move a 500 Newton crate by tying a rope around it and pulling upward on the rope at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. How hard do you have to pull to keep the crate moving with constant velocity? Assume mu sub k is 0 0.40. The first step is to determine which physical laws apply to the situation. So let's discuss what Newton's laws are and where they are applicable. The most important of Newton's laws is the second law, which states that the sum total of all the forces applied to a particle is equivalent to the mass times the acceleration of that object. One common error is to think that the mass times acceleration is itself a force. Mass times acceleration is merely equivalent to the sum total of all the forces according to Newton's second law. But mass times acceleration itself is not defined as a force. Acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time. That is a vector in its own right, and it's not a force. Also, note that the left side of this law calls for the addition of vectors. As I said in this video, learning how to add vectors is the point where to the point where it is second nature is very important to your success in elementary physics. So what this law calls for us to do is to identify all the force vectors that act on a particle, add those forces as vectors, and then set that result equal to mass times acceleration. The first law is mathematically a special case of the second that if the acceleration is zero then the sum total of all the forces acting on the particle is zero. These laws apply to any physical situation that take place in what is called an inertial reference frame. That means a frame of reference that is not accelerating. An example of a non-inertial reference frame would be a box car on a train that speeds up and slows down. In such a case, Newton's laws would not apply. Now let's go back to the example. A crate is being acted upon by several forces. It is and is moving across the floor. The floor is not accelerating, therefore Newton's laws of motion can apply. The crate does not change position in the vertical dimension, therefore the velocity in the vertical is zero, therefore the acceleration in the vertical is zero, therefore Newton's first law applies to the motion in the vertical dimension. The crate does move in the horizontal, And since it moves in the horizontal, we have to ask ourselves, what, what, what is the acceleration? Well, we are told in the problem statement that we keep the crate moving with constant velocity. Therefore, the acceleration is equal to zero. One common error is to consider only situations where the position does not change to be those in which the first law is applicable. However, the first law is applicable whenever the acceleration is equal to zero. And that happens if the velocity does not change. Notice that in this example, the first law applies to the motion in the horizontal, even though it's moving, because while the crate moves in the horizontal, the velocity stays constant. 
Since step one gave us Newton's laws, we can move on to step two, but I want to emphasize that step one applies to any physics problem. The first step in solving any physics problem is to determine which physical laws you can use to solve that problem. Then you can continue by using the particular physical laws that you selected for the presented physical situation. If you don't correctly identify the physical laws that apply to the given situation, you're just going to spend hours upon hours confusing yourself. Now I want to draw the free body diagram. Step 2. I will represent the crate as a point with a dot. There are four forces acting on the crate. The tension from the rope has an unknown magnitude, but has a direction of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The force of gravity has a magnitude of 500 newtons and is pointing down. The normal force, which has an unknown magnitude, is directed up. The final force is the frictional force, which has a magnitude equal to the normal force times 0 0.40 and is directed in the negative x direction. This is a complete free body diagram. Every force that acts on the crate is represented as a vector. Each vector is identified with its magnitude and the directions are clear from the diagram. Notice that not every force was explicitly presented in the problem statement. You have to infer from the problem statement all the forces. We, can inf we understand that the crate is on the ground, so gravity is pushing down and the ground is pushing up. That's where we get the normal and the gravitational force, though those were not explicitly defined in the problem statement. <clears throat> Moving on to step three, I will set up the vector equations that correspond to the physical laws that were already determined to apply to the situations in step two. In the horizontal, we have the tension times cosine of 30 degrees minus the normal force times 0 0.40 equals zero. In the vertical we have the tension times sine of 30 degrees plus the normal force minus the gravitational force which is 500 newtons equal to zero. Now we have set up a system of two equations and two unknowns. So we have turned this physics problem into a math problem. And if you are handy with your algebra, as you should be if you're taking a physics class, this math problem should be easy to solve. If you were working along with the video, you can check your work. I'll give you the answer. Uh, the answer to the question, how hard do you have to pull to keep the crate moving with constant velocity, is the magnitude of the tension, which we calculate to be 188 newtons. These four steps, one, determine which physical laws apply to the physical situation, two, draw complete and accurate free body diagrams. Three, write the vector equations that correspond to the physical laws. Four, solve the equations for the unknowns of interest. Should help you along, guide yourself along when solving any problem that uses Newton's laws. Notice that the first step, however, applies to any physical situation, and you will be required to solve some diabolical problems that require you to solve equations from one physical law, say the conservation of energy, take those answers and use in equations from Newton's laws, and then take that result to use any kinematic equations. But even in this diabolical type of problem, you must begin each step by identifying which physical laws apply to the situation before trying to attack with the mathematics. Anyway, I hope I've helped you, given you a little more insight to how to think through physics problems. If you have any questions, leave them down below.